Good evening, and welcome to another exciting and hopefully informative episode of So Into Bourbon. I'm Charlie. I'm Glenn. And we're here in my basement, as always. Tonight, got something very exciting planned. A blind tasting. Does this mean I have to put blinders on? No. Mm. Uh, what we have done is I have poured two, di two different bourbons. They are bourbons, I will tell you that. Okay. And you know what? They are two whiskeys. I changed my mind. They're two whiskeys. So, oh, wait I poured a minute. two whiskeys. Are they actually not two bourbons? Or are I you have just poured telling two me this so whiskeys. you don't want, Okay. <laughs> I have poured two whiskeys, both separate. See, so he's already screwing with my mind. No, I wouldn't do that in a blind tasting. Mm -hmm. I have poured two different whiskeys. So the Tall Glen Karens are the one, and the short is the other. And we are going to have Glenn drink said whiskeys and give me his feedback. And at the end, we will reveal what they are. Now, we have already done my blind episode and it's available in our library. And I love blinds and I will tell you why. Because it takes away all your preconceived notions of what a bourbon is and what a whiskey is and what I like and what I don't like. And what you're left with is your senses. Smell, taste, touch yep no oh. marketing no preconceived notions it's just you and the brown water in the glass that's right and often it has very surprising results so we're gonna get this started are you ready I'm excited now real quick which one's the bourbon and which one's the rye they are both <laughs> whiskeys and right. i would like you to decide would you like to start tall or short i'll start short we're gonna start short let's take a look at this here not real dark. You know, it's it's really not real dark. It's, no. it's uh, you know, somewhat translucent. It, it has a nice, crisp, vibrant color to it, but it is very light. It does. It sticks to the glass pretty well. Yeah. So. Nice clean. Hmm. Not getting a whole lot on the nose. He's not getting a whole lot on the nose. There's... A little bit of ethanol, not much. Yeah. I get I get a little sweetness. Um, I get a little bit of uh, maybe some char, maybe maybe a little bit, but not a lot of complexity. Not no, not complex. There's not a lot coming through. I've got uh, and there's a little bit of like a burnt sugar that I'm picking up, but a little sweetness. Yeah, yeah I'll give you that. That's about it. And I and I will say this too. Obviously. I know what these are, but I have not had either of these whiskeys in quite a long while. So this will be a revisit for okay, me. Okay, cool. Good I'm luck. I'm looking forward to it. That's really sweet. Not corn sweet though not not uh mm -hmm. it doesn't have that candy corn or um oh what's the word i'm looking for uh, corn syrup mm -hmm. sweetness to it it's more of a fruit sweet to me yeah i i wouldn't it definitely doesn't have that um that kind of cornmeal mm -hmm. uh sweetness to it uh but there is some sweetness to it i've got for sure i gotta have another taste here to see what else Hmm. Would you pour me, Charlie? See, this is why I love blinds, man. And this is this is the point of this. While he's gathering his thoughts, if you're watching this at home, this is the stuff you should be doing with your friends because this is what's fun. I'm I'm a little perplexed because it's it's got some pepper to it. Um, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And almost, parts of it make me think it could be a could be rye or have a higher rye mash bill, but then with the the sweetness that kind of opposes that idea. So you're in the uh, tumbler now, buddy. Yeah, you're, you're second guessing. Would you like to take a guess on proof? I'm guessing that is around 100 proof. I don't think it's much higher than that. Okay. Um, 
but yeah, I think it's right. a, it's in the hundred proof. Have have you had enough of, of that particular offer? I think so. I think I'm so, ready for the next one. So our one. guess is a, a high higher rye or maybe a rye hundred proof or less. I don't know. I'm already second guessing that though. But we can always revisit. Gonna, you yeah, let, yeah. you were smart. You left a little in your glass, mm -hmm. so you can always go back to it. Let's try a let's try the tall boy. Uh, instant discernible color difference. Yeah, this one's a little darker. Yeah. It's got a nice... Uh, yeah, it puts a nice ring around the glass and, and uh, really kind of sticks to it. It's a nice, nice yeah, run down both, the glass. Both of these really stick to the glass. Yeah. And this, uh, it's not... I wouldn't say it's a lot darker than the first uh, one, but... Okay, well it's, now, it's, it's now a, when I hold them up yeah, next to each it's other, It's a little yeah. darker, for okay. sure. Let's see. Now this, instantly I'm picking up uh, cinnamon. Cinnamon candy. A little cinnamon, huh? A little corn. I get a little, uh, a little fruit on there. Maybe some yeah. cherries. There's some fruit, like a, kind of a dank. Dank fruit. Dank fruit. All right. Hmm. Cheers. Do you, do you prefer this nose to the first? Well, this nose actually stands out. Uh, yeah, okay. It, 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 this yeah. has a nose. I, would not, I, I don't think the first one really had much of a nose on it. So would not disagree. With yeah, you. I would. I would prefer this nose just because there is some discernible, um, discernible noses. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Definitely more corn I'm picking up on this one. And I'm still getting that cinnamon or red hot hmm. flavor. It's not spicy though. It's not hot as far as spiciness. It's just that, that particular mm -hmm. cinnamon or red hot flavor that I'm picking up. Yeah, I definitely agree with you on the corn. There, there is a lot of, it's really interesting because normally I don't like a lot of corn. Like if, that, if, if the first thing I drink is, is that boom, corn. Mm -hmm. It usually doesn't do much for me. It's, this is right at that level where I'm just like, yeah. I really don't mind that as much. It's there, but it's mellowed out. Yeah, yeah. And, and then like you said, you get a lot of other flavor too. So I get some, um, I get a, I'm surprised I get quite a bit of like a little pepperiness to it mm -hmm. um, on it, at least for me. It, I don't think it's a very high proof. I think it's between 90 and 100, probably in the 90s, I'm guessing. That's a really uh, interesting flavor. It is. I, and I, I'm, I know I'm probably wrong here. It's kind of reminiscent of a Yellowstone. Um, so I don't know. I'm not going to say it's Yellowstone, but that's just kind of what it's, what it's reminding me of. Um, I need to cleanse the palate here before I go back to number one. Yeah. Yeah, the, the second one is really unique for me because, like I said, usually if, if corn is very front and forward, mm -hmm. I'm like, nah, I'm out. That one gives you just enough of the corn, and it's like, stick around because yeah. I got some other stuff going on. So I, I get a little bit of baking spice, and that kind of corn sweetness just kind of drops off. It's still there through mm -hmm. the whole finish, but at the end, it's, it's a really nice, pleasant... Um, you know, kind of oaky, sweet, sweet but not too sweet, with right. some oakiness to it. I, I kind of, uh, I, I kind of like that one. Now, now that I've gone back to this one, nosing this one again, I'm picking up a lot more corn on this one. Yeah, I've got a little bit left in my glass, and you know, number one is. Uh, it's not bad. <laughs> it's just, it's not memorable. Okay. It's not one that makes me stand up and shout and be grab like, it Man, and take another sip. That's so good. Yeah. It's so yeah. good. Um, How about number two? Number two is more interesting. I, I, I would agree with you. Yeah. yeah. It, and we just discussed this a little while ago 
I like to have my palate challenged. I like complexity. Yeah. I may not be able to pick out 50 different flavors that I'm picking up, but I do like to have it challenged, to know that there's, you know, yeah. different notes in there that are kind of battling each other. And it's funny you bring that up. Um, I think people... I think a lot of drinkers are intimidated, and, and even we struggle. And, and if you watch any of our episodes, we are not bourbon stewards or thief and barrel or whatever. We're not sommeliers. Like, we are not sommeliers. So we often have a hard time describing what we're tasting. And I think a lot of bourbon drinkers do, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't drink it. Even if you can't explain, if you drink no. it and you're like, that's amazing, well, describe it to me. It's really good. And just leave it at that. Like, it, that's okay. And I think that's the boat that we're in is if we're going to drink something, be awesome or be terrible. Like, be unique. Be something right. that is worth drinking. And um, I think the second one probably is. I agree. I, I would definitely give the nod to number two. All right. Um, don't hate number one. Would you like to, would you like to see what Absolutely. you Absolutely. Okay. Wait. Do you yeah. want number one or number two first? Show me number one. Number one. First in our hearts, Lasting Glens is... Ah, really? Henry McKenna, 10-year wow. bottled in bond. Okay. A few notes about Henry McKenna, 10-year bottled in bond. And uh, many of you probably recognize this bottle. This is the bottle that started off, um, let's call the more recent bourbon craze. This won the 2019 World Spirits Competition as Best in Show, only the second time that it's done that. But before you say, how terrible are, is Glenn's palate that the best whiskey in the world, these are single barrels. So Henry McKenna is the trifecta. And one of the reasons that it kicked off such a frenzy is it's 10 year age stated. It's a bottled in bond and it's a single barrel. So every one you get should, in theory, taste a little different. Right. Which I really like Henry McKenna 10 year. And being a single barrel, there are nuances between the barrels. So maybe one barrel you taste is wonderful and one not so much. And once again, it, it's a, it was a fine bourbon. Uh, uh, yeah. I didn't have any complaints. I didn't dislike it. It just didn't blow me away i did get the proof right you did get the proof right, right. on the nose yep and mash bill wise this is a 78 percent corn 12 percent malta barley and a 10 percent rye so not technically a high rye not a high rye um but uh definitely kind of a blend of mash bills um yeah msrp on this bottle and if you have have entered the bourbon economy in the last year or so you know when this won uh, in 2019, MSRP was under $30. MSRP now here in our local area, in the Louisville, Kentucky area, is uh, just north of 60, if you can find it. If you're wondering why I'm smiling and I'm struggling to contain my smile is because I think I might have peeked at what number two is on Charlie's computer over here. <laughs> he, he totally, he totally probably <laughs> did. And number two is... George Dickel, 2005, bottled in bond, 13 years old. This is an 84% corn mash bill, 10% rye, 6% malted barley. It won Whiskey Advocates 2019 Whiskey of the Year, and it is also a gold medal winner at the San Francisco uh, Spirits Competition. So, if you're listening from George Dickel, I owe an apology to you because I have trashed your whiskey on this podcast. Yeah. And I knew that he did that, but I knew <laughs> that if you took the Dickel name out of it and he was just drinking it, that this is a damn fine bottle Although, of I will say, whiskey. this is not the same Dickel that I had. No, it's not. It's, it's uh, a this previous is, iteration. So This is a um, another bottle that I love to float out there and let people try without knowing because people feel strongly about George Dickel. Same as they feel about Jack Daniels, it's Tennessee whiskey, blah, blah, blah. It tastes like this, it tastes like that. This is a 13 year old bottled in bond and the MSRP on this bottle was at one time like 30 bucks. It has ballooned now to about 50 bucks, but you can still find this on the shelf. In our area, which I'm sure you can find it in your area, it's a great bottle to pick up. I mean, 13 years old, 
rarefied air. I'm shocked. I'm, I'm upset. <laughs> you did it to me, Charlie. Um, and as we speak, I'm liking number two less and less. He's lying. <laughs> this is uh, this is what's great about doing blinds, and this is why we like to do them. Um, when we do these, I know you're probably watching this and be like, he knew what he was doing the whole time. I made him turn around. He was out of the room. We did these pours. Uh, but these are fun things that you can do. And, you know, we talk about a lot. Bourbon's gotten really stuffy. You know, people waiting in line and going to lotteries and trying to find these, you know, unicorn bottles and rare. There's some really good bottles out there if you just give them a try and buy stuff to open it. And, Absolutely. you know, if it's good, awesome. If it's bad, even better, because now you have something that you can trash and give to your friends and talk about how bad it is. Charlie, just last night, some, I have a, there's a neighborhood bourbon group. We got together and everyone brought a bottled in bond. Um, we had six bottled in bonds that we blind tasted and one came out on top. I'm not going to say which one because we may do a future episode on it, but this bottle was sub $20 and it beat out five other bottled and bonds. So you never know. That's Blinds. what's fun. Yep. And, and if you saw the smile on my face <laughs> that I couldn't contain when I saw that this number two was, that's interesting that number two would be George Dickel. Anyway, um, that's why. Yeah. Because I have literally trashed George Dickel in the past. So and, apologies to George Dickel. And this is the other thing that I'll leave the episode with is things that you said, oh, I don't like that bourbon five years ago, six years ago, two years ago. I had it at a restaurant. I, I had a bottle of it. It wasn't any good. Go back and revisit. Palettes change, uh, especially as we get older. Um, our palettes change. They evolve. You develop different taste buds. You develop different taste. So go back and revisit those ones that you hate or that you had a strong feeling about and try them again and try them blind. And See what happens, because there's some really good stuff out there, and if you give it a chance, you uh, may be able to open your bar up a little bit. Absolutely, and let's not forget, uh, you're watching this episode. If you've gotten this far, you must enjoy something about what you're watching. I don't know why, but you must. So go check out our Instagram, So Into Bourbon, on Instagram. Uh, we have a Facebook group, So Into Bourbon. Follow Glenn on TikTok. Very with oh, our, absolutely. With our Follow yeah. Glenn on TikTok at The Whiskey Realtor. And of course, be sure to like and subscribe. We got a lot of really cool stuff coming down the pipeline in 2023. We may even take the show on tour and uh, got some really interesting. Don't want to let the cat out of the bag, but we got some cool stuff coming. So. Absolutely. We look forward to it and we thank you for watching. Absolutely. Thank you for watching. Start drinking some weird stuff. Uh, people at Dickel, Glenn, sorry, and uh, have a wonderful night, and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye, everybody. Peace out. So, I hope I didn't open my birthday bottle. Oh, <laughs> good. 12, 22, 10. Yeah. So. Ba, 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 ba. Avocados. Am I still in frame? <clears throat> ra -ta -ta, ra -ta -ta. Eat some chicken, too. Avocado. All right. <clears throat> so into bourbon, Glenn's. <laughs> what? Nothing. <laughs> so into bourbon, Glenn's blind episode, take 655. Action.